we have what we know already to be Poisson, what appears to be Poisson. So we're going to use the depoise. What depoise does, or D norm or D gamma, it will predict what the values of the dependent variable would be based on those parameters. So in this case, we have, we're saying, predict, tell me what the number of deaths should have been given these uh, values for the, the proportions and for the core, core years. Okay, so we do that. And it says, this is what we should see. 0 0.54, 0 0.33, 0 0.10. Now, okay, well, how, how well does that match what we actually observed? Well, we can, we can figure that. We can determine that exactly because we can apply. We had 200 observations, so we'll multiply 200 times our function and then apply the floor to get the minimum to, to apply it to round it. Floor takes, rounds it down. And so here are the observed, this is the predicted counts based on our function f. This is our best fitting, this is our fitting function. f is our function that is fit based on the d poise. So this is what a Poisson says it should be, and we multiply that by 200. So here are our observations that are predicted, and here are our actual observations. Very close, right? So we, we've demonstrated this is what we actually saw. So we demonstrated that um, we, with simulation, this is the simulated number. This is the observed number. There's something to it. It's not smoke and mirrors. We can come very close. Okay, and so now we'll bind it up into a data frame where um, uh, F, F is predicted, F is the fit, the estimated, P is the observed, and again, we see how close they are, and here are the K's number of deaths. Now, all of this is in horse kick. Um, one thing you can do with R, you don't have to constantly execute these scripts. You can, you can accumulate scripts in a file, and I've done this for you. It's in your folder. Okay, so horsekicks.r, right? These are, these are the parameters that we just read in. These are the commands we just executed one at a time. You can put all of this in a, in a, in a file and put it on your drive somewhere and then, and then source it, the source command. But you have to, um, so um, here's, here's something you, you should do for this course because we'll be using this as a convention. Go into your C drive. Uh, if, you're, if you're at CDC, now this could be a problem actually if you're at work because often at work they'll, they won't let you do this. They'll let you, um, you, what you need to do is find some place you can create a folder and call it Rx. And then as we create these scripts, these simulation scripts, put them in there. So we're saying source, all this is is the path where that file is located. Okay, so source will go out and find them and, and executes them all at once. Sourcing is faster and it's, you know, pro, you can call it anytime you want. We can call a, a file with whatever commands. Okay, so um, what if we want to store this? What if we want different types of information? We want, we want the sample mean, we want the count, we want variance, we want all these different measures and we want from our, from our simulation that we just performed, our estimation of the, the predicted number of deaths from kicks versus the actual. And if we wanted to store it in a list, could we do that? Well, sure. So here we use the list function, we put it in a list. And then you can look at the list. This is what all of your simulation mathematical functions do. They all output lists, all of them. And each list will have a component that's, uh, in this case, we have different vectors. 
k is a vector, counts a vector, mean is a, a single element, as is variance. But that's how a list is a, a, the only, the best structure, the only structure really in R that will allow you to store all of these disparate measures. Okay, so, and you can call parts of it a list, in case you don't know, these are components of a list. We have four components. One is named K, one is named count, one is named mean, and we could call just one of them. We could say, what's the value of the count component by my list dollar sign count? Or we could say, what is the second component using a double subscript? The second component is also the count component. It's the second one, that's the first one, that's the second one. So we can access this vector, which is the second component, either by the name or by the, the, the index with a double bracket. Lists require that you use a double bracket. Okay, or by, by the name itself. Okay, so lists, everything that we, when we run these functions, we're going to be using lists all the time. And you can say, what's the structure? Here, when we use structure, now we're starting to see a more elaborate report of what the results look like. And, and we'll quickly see, when we start running these functions, the list that gets returned from the function that we store in a variable can be huge, can, be, can consist of dozens, even hundreds of components that are all different objects. Okay, so here's one more quick one. Um, we're out of time, but we will get right into the simulation uh, in the next one. Old Faithful. Okay, so we have data sets about uh, Old Faithful erupting. So we're going to create a histogram. Um, so here we're using, let's do a frequency histogram of the times, waiting is the times between eruptions. And we're going to put that histogram in H. And notice nothing happens. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, something does happen actually. Uh, here's our histogram, my mistake. Here's our histogram. Okay, so note uh, that this is these are the times in between. Notice it appears to be bimodal. Okay, it's not normal. There's a mode here and there's a mode here. And so here's our two waiting times. Let's query the object that came out of that. Okay, I'll kill that. Let's say um, str h and I need my run function back. There it is. Here, note when we ran the histogram, look at this. This is what is stored in this histogram object. This is an object. We have breaks, counts, intensities, density, mids, x name, equidistant. All of this stuff. Okay. Anytime we express H, if I clear the plot, H is an object. If I get rid of that and I say show me h again because we assign the return of the histogram function to h. Um, it doesn't draw it, it shows me the list. It shows me the list. Okay. Now, these are the actual values of the elements in the list. Okay, so in order to get the, the histogram back, we need to do this. Okay, so there's our histogram. So H has a structure. There are names. These are just the names of the components. We saw that. We could say, what are the values in breaks? That was one of the components. We can say, what are the values of counts? So don't think, when you create a graph like this, don't think of it as just a visual. You can retain all of that and use it later. Okay, uh, well, we're, we're out of time here.